Ladies and gentlemen, this is Uxx, and this is the most generational crashouts in the animal kingdom by Channel Casual Geographic. Here's another Casual Geographic video. It's about crashouts. I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know. It's gonna be something interesting coming from Casual Geographic, and it's like a Halloween season. Is this a Halloween video? It didn't feel like it from the thumbnail, but I don't know. But yeah, Casual Geographic is like he makes. Uh, wholesome videos as well, but usually it's just horror movies because come on, Animal Kingdom, that's what you're gonna get. It's getting like uh, more in the middle nowadays, not too horrific, but it's horrific enough, but also somewhat wholesome. I don't know which this one's gonna be, but it's gonna be interesting. Let's do it. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, so that way I know which type of videos to react to more. I like watching animal type of videos, like zoology style videos, casual graphics of Frank One, things like that. And yeah, uh, but if you haven't seen those videos, check out the link in the description. If you want to react to any specific video, comment down and let's do it. <laughs> I say that all the time on this channel, and people are, what you talking about, Willy? Okay, tigers are insanely powerful, much better than, you know, lions. I know that for damn sure, I don't care. Tigers are twice as muscular, twice as athletic. Have you seen them jump from standstill? 10, 15 feet, God knows what, they're literally the athletic powerhouse. Two top cats, tiger and lion. Tigers are just better. They're, they're more muscular, their claws are more powerful, right? I get it, lion and their pride and all that, all the group mentality, whatever. Tigers are just pound for pound better, right? All the stories of like some ti tiger going insane and killing a ton of people. There's only tiger like that. Right? All the like, uh, that Champawa thing or whatever. I know it's most, a lot of them are in India, but still. A lot of like, uh, when tiger went insane and just killed a lot of people. It it's a lot. And if you see those videos of like, lions just grabbing onto an elephant, elephants like, what is it? What is it in my bag? Is that a mosquito? What is that? And just walking away while lions are just keep trying to drag it down. One tiger, an elephant, like, what the fuck? And just backed away. And look at how it jumped there. Tiger is the most powerful, most terrifying cat of all time. I don't even care, right? That, that's what I think. It's like a backyard bully brawl. Crash out. Here's the definition, and here's the definition, but in picture. And if it's not clear now, it will be by the end of this definition. Crash out. Here's the Someone who constantly on the verge of losing there and is ready to throw everything away at a moment's notice. Hmm. Okay, I thought it's I thought it's gonna be something like uh, something stupid, but no, it's just like last straw type of thing, right? Uh, you know, I've said this in basically in the recent conflict things like you don't know when people's like, oh, enough, I don't even care anymore, last straw type of thing. Right, and people go nuclear or whatever. This is basically what that is. Definition, and here's the definition, but in picture. And if it's not clear now, it will be by the end. Yeah, but is it is this picture that or just like a uh, wolf? Yeah, wolves, right? Wolf is just stupid. He doesn't realize there's no ground and just like jumping. This video, crash outs exist in all walks of life. You know what they say? Where there's a will, there's a way for a Chris to get rocked by a fresh prince flick of the wrist. But today, we're gonna talk about the biggest crash outs in nature, and there's a lot to choose from, so some had to get left off. I won't be talking about hippos, honey badgers, or cape buffalo. I've said my piece on this roid raging homicidal hydro horse on steroids. We already know Africa's black death is a hunter's nightmare, for humans and lions alike. And I have an entire video on this biracial black air force hate mongering Hufflepuff. But what I will talk about are rhinos. Because I've said that rhinos are legally blind, terminally traumatized anxiety tanks that'll buck up to anything from a butterfly to a buffalo. Except I was wrong. Recent studies show that the eyesight of rhinos might not even be that bad. It's just their attitude. Which means that rhino fully punted a warthog purposely and unprovoked. While this one perceived an assault on eight wheels and still went for a literal headshot. There's a reason why a group- Okay, look. Every time I, I heard from a case of Jurafic basic because that's the video I watch and like even then I'm pretty sure tears the video as well. And even in then I didn't really believe it. I'm like, okay, fine, I guess it's scientifically proven, whatever. Because you can't be you can't live in African server and all those servers and survive your bad vision. Like that doesn't matter what you are, right? I always believe like probably not the case, is it's just it's just like that because it's tanky, right? And like probably not too smart. That's it. Vision thing might not I always believe that, but 
apparently that is the true, right? If it had that much of a vision problem where it just like can't see anything, just like constantly like spearing everything, he wouldn't have survived. The species would have died a long time ago. Group of rhinos is an honest to god crash, but they're not even the biggest crash outs in Africa. That would be elephants. What? Like literally, they're the oh, biggest. Yeah, Whoever made this up yeah. actively helped escort people off the census, yeah, which yeah. they don't need help doing since elephants flatlined over 600 people last year. But it isn't until elephants hit must that they really become crash out kings. Must is when a sudden burst of hormones turns elephants into 12,000 pound drunk lusting frat boys. The word what must that? even comes from the word intoxicated, and a down bad bull's testosterone levels can spike 60 times higher than normal. And that's where the crash out comes in. No animal is safe from an entitled elephant that can't handle rejection. Not even baby elephants. Eating a toddler because his mom won't relieve you? Crash out. But the real degeneracy didn't show itself until humans got involved. Of course there's an Indian flag there. Of course most of this is gonna be in India. Because of course it is. Basically this is roid rage, right? I've seen videos of people talking about what a roid rage is. Mike Isrotel, I think I'm pretty sure I'm... Recently I've heard him talking about like what a roid rage is. I'm like, what the fuck? How do you live like that? That's insane. It's basically that. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of story. Poaching is evil, we all know it, and it's often the older, more mature bulls that get hit the hardest, for obvious reasons. What wasn't expected was removing elephant OGs from the population meant that the younger, immature teenage bulls in must got even more out of pocket. And what do you get when you have unruly six-ton pests with no father figure to keep them in line? Eh, hell if I know. There was a period in the 90s where three young bulls that got rejected by their own kind, resorting to violating and killing not one, not two, not ten, but 63 rhinos. Fatherless behavior for an elephant apparently means turning a rhino from a tight end to a whiteout, and it wasn't until the season more mature bulls were brought back in that the rhino ravaging eventually stopped. And it's not just males that can choose violence. We can't forget that time an elephant traveled across India just to life deprive a 70 year old senior citizen while she was getting water. Video. For context, that elephant escaped from the Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary and traveled over. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, did he say Dalma? He pronounced right. That's a surprise. Whenever you Americans spell anything Indian, it's just like you always put A ah in A. And I was telling in the past, just say A, oh, not A. Ah. It's not Dalma, it's Dalma. He, he pronounced it right, that's the price. Over a hundred miles to the Rappai village in Odisha. Being homicidal for over a hundred miles straight is already menace behavior. What solidified it was that same herd pulling up to that woman's funeral later that day and paying everything but respects. And that same elephant- Okay, elephants don't usually just do that. Especially that meticulous. What did the old woman do, man? This is insane. Like elephants don't go surgical like that. I mean, rage makes sense, like okay, in a place, but actually seeking out home and everything, come on. Then grabbed her soul evacuated zero HP body and proceeded to put her in the negatives. Basically, she got put on a shirt except the shirt was reversible. And after desecrating her corpse, dessert was destroying the woman's house along with several others. Now many have said the woman Maya Murmu had it coming and was involved in poaching and this was a case of an elephant hey. not forgetting or forgiving. It also could have been someone's grandmother getting murked twice and me- Okay, so the elephants are so insane and what way I'm talking about? I'm talking about like human-like. They are so human-like, especially big brain elephants, right? I mean, when it comes to that, their kids, right? If, if there is no adult around, they basically go, you know, like, like he said, like in just left and right, just going insane, losing their shit. Same thing applies to humans, right? So I'm guessing the adult elephants keep children, like <laughs> keep, it, keep them in line teach them proper things, is that what's happening? That is some insane shit, humans like basically, right? In the human world, elephants know they hu what humans are. Humans are not like other animals who just like stay in one place and basically migrate or no migrate, right? That's an old thing. In the, you know, modern modernity, yeah, modernity in, in today's world, right? They know the humans can come, but they could live somewhere else. So the elephant knew where to go, how to navigate human made roads and go to play, which means they know what humans are and how humans are, right? This is some frightening shit, which means hum you know, elephants can literally figure out like how we are, how our behavior is. I'm surprised they're not attacking humans left and right. I'm, but then again, I'm not surprised because they're smart. They probably have that function as well, like let it go, let it go type of shit, which is insane. So the more I hear about elephants and how smart they are, orcas, elephants, basically the big brain, uh, you know, animals, it's just like way too close to humans, right?
memed on Twitter all because of RNG. We'll never know the why, but what we do know is my favorite animal is capable of crash outs of catastrophic proportions. And now we got the smallest crash out in the world. When a colony of Kalabopsis saunders sea ants gets attacked, some of those soldiers will rupture two huge poison filled glands and literally blow oh themselves God. up. They don't just seppuku themselves, they also rain a toxic, corrosive glue that either traps the op ants in place or just burns them alive. It's self-sacrificing altruistic behavior meant to defend the colony, but that is one hell of an escalation. One species of termite also has a concept of kamikaze themselves, and they have toxic glands that actually grow as they get older. That means the same old worker termites with dull mandibles that can't fight or forage as well as their juniors also carry the most potent, explosive backpacks in the colony. So their last act of service involves eviscerating themselves in a rain of internal organs, intestines, and toxins, which proves that the most dangerous crash out is the one with nothing left to lose. For reference, that's like breaking into a house and the last thing you see is a senile 90 year old rushing you with a bomb strap to their chest. But the wildest crash out might be what P aphids do once a predator breaks into their home. Because not only will soldiers come together and turn themselves into fleshy fireworks, they'll use their own bodily fluids to plug up the opening. Even if it means they get left outside in past tense, even if it means they suffocate on their own insides, and even if the process senses subtracts them instantly. It's one thing to self destruct the backpedal of predator or even after already being eaten, which aphids actually actually do. Using flex seal made out of your own guts for home repair is exactly the type of behavior this video is about. But if elephants violate in the natural order didn't already tell you, the worst crash outs are the ones humans created. And this black air force B is the- Okay. The ant thing doesn't really surprise me because ants are not like uh, elephant humans. Basically, they're mostly, mostly of the group mentality and things like that. They're very different. They don't think like us, right? They don't have the same type of mental capacity as that. They're, they're basically, it's all about the- Whatever it's called, hive and hive is that called hive? I don't know. It's all about their colony and things, right? Colonies, greater goods, and like they're just basically, you know, that way, right? There is no ant rights, just like human rights or something like that. That they, they, they don't think about that, right? So it's different than elephants and humans. So yeah, but their biology evolved into that. That is something, right? Whenever we think about like how things are evolving, that's insane. The result of one of the biggest oopsies in human history. Back in the 50s, African bees were brought to Brazil and crossbred with their more domesticated European cousins. The idea was, if they could combine the two, they could create a bee that was more efficient than the Europeans in tropical climates while also being less defensive than the- Imagine that James Bond villain noise. I'll combine those two, make a super bee! Background music plays. The African counterparts. But in one of the most consequential ups possible, a local beekeeper accidentally released 26 swarms of Africanized bees, including queens. But experts said not to worry, that the bees would either die out in the foreign climate or get bred out of existence by the already present European bees. Only reason they said that, because they can't find those bees. How are they gonna do that? Ah, it's gonna be fine, relax. This is the fear people have biological labs. Oh, we're just, we just developing this deadly virus because we just want to study it. Whoops, that's it. The last thing humanity will fear is the word oops. Yes, but actually no. By the 60s, they made it across the country. By the 80s, they hit Mexico. By the 90s, they were popping up in the US. And today, the Africanized assault has spread throughout America like a rageaholic rash. And here's the thing with playing God with bees. You better be prepared for hell. These Africanized bees were way meaner than anything this side of the Atlantic had ever seen. They were I mean, way more aggressive, much less forgiving, and the same honey merchants that were in I mean, African server is just deadly, right? Tears who talks about server all the time, and it's just in my head. Tears who system is what, how I think about these things. African server, African bees, of course they're dangerous. Enough to legitimately punk elephants, that's not a joke by the way, we're doing numbers on unsuspecting people. You see, where European bees might send 10 to 20 guard bees after you, the Africanized flying mob will pull up in the hundreds. And where European all the bugs you see, even the eagle if you see, who are you going to be more afraid of, bee or an eagle? Let's, let's really let's think about it. Eagle is more dangerous, sure, but you, you know the eagles probably go away. Bee will basically sting you and you're in the hospital. Again, elephants are not so different than humans, right? Everything's fine, but well, fuck me, that's a bee, I'm running away. And bees might chase you for uh, a couple feet. The African variety will chase trespassers for a quarter of a mile, assuming you even get that far. The irony is, African bees have smaller hives. That means these gang flies weaponize a higher percentage of their hive just to go after you. Add the fact that the very smell of bee venom is like a Batman signal to the rest of the hive, and you realize just how badly that one beekeeper screwed us over. 
Speaking of venom, you probably know that honeybees die after stinging since the stingers are barbed and attached to their abdomen, causing attacking bees to literally disembowel themselves. But what you might not know is that stinger will continue pumping venom into you long after the bee has become a was. Now that's just doing the most. That's how you get stories of people- Okay, did somebody really like- That was a human skin. Somebody really said, okay, let's test on me and they were testing that. I mean, they could have used an animal or something like that. I don't know which humans have. Fuck it, I'll, I'll take this big bit of bee sting. That guy basically likes pain at that point. That is insane. I'm doing that for science. Yeah, sure, man. Oh, this is one of the instances of biology fucking you up, right? We will think about like how is like evolution working like that? How are like those ants developing things that would make them explore? It's very specific. No, it's not specific. It's evolution, basically like hoarding things out. Right, things that work survive, things that don't work don't survive, and this combination of everything. The same thing with the bees here. Now, bees stinging and cutting their own abdomen and dying is not ideal, is it? So that's the bee. I can imagine like millions of years from now on, some bee that doesn't cut their abdomen and just like grow another sting will be more dominant and will like overpower everything, and that's the bees now. People being chased by vindictive swarms. Oh, and by the way, it's proven if you try to duck the fate by jumping in the water, they will wait, sometimes with fatal consequences. In 2013, a Texas man died after being stung over 1,000 times, and the bee still had enough malice left over to leave his wife and daughter with a hundred apiece. It says a lot that the dietary habits of the crash out mascot might have helped create one of the most infamous crash crowds in the air, but not- Okay, what does your second amendment say about flamethrowers? You all have like glocks in your <laughs> whatever, what is it called? Like, ah, uh, glove box. In your car's glove box, you have like glocks and shit. Do you have flamethrowers in your trunk? Because if, if, that, it's that, if that's it, it's legal or not, I don't know if it's legal. If I lived in America and know that I'm going in some kind of wild life, I would always keep a flamethrower in my trunk. Fuck that. Bees are coming, they're gonna sting you. Here's a flamethrower. That shit is insane. Thousands times sting it. The pain alone would kill you. Just out of shock. Not all crash outs are fueled by hate. Some are powered by love. Courting bald eagles will interlock talons and plummet down towards the earth only to separate oh, yeah, at the last possible second. Because apparently feathery foreplay means death spiraling in a questionable game of chicken. Apparently, it's to test each other's fitness as a possible partner. You know, separate the strong from the strongest. Except it does the opposite when the entangled avians crash land into trees, water, or sometimes straight pavement and take each other out the dating pool. And bald eagles mate for life, so where do you even go after your vow renewal turns into a weight that only one of you is conscious for? A study showed that eagles will also death spiral with rivals, so it's really a case of either f*** me or fight me or just don't waste my time. But that makes even less sense, because at least with a mate, the logic is you're trying to find the strongest, most eligible single to spend the rest of your life with. Handing death a two-for-one BOGO deal because you had beef and literally couldn't let it go is the definition of crashing out. At least when it happens with deer like moose, you know it's really bad luck. But voluntarily interlocking toes just to die with someone you claim to hate, like what's really going on here? But that relationship's nowhere near as toxic as the house sparrows. It's like Tweety listening to NBA Youngboy. It's a honey badger with wings and an op to every other bird, but especially their own kind. Okay, so the crashing out is caused by the fact that house sparrows are monogamous and mate for life. There are also serial cheating air strumpets, and 15% of sparrow children born aren't even related to the male raising them. Cheating isn't a foreign concept to birds. Thoughts and prayers out to the penguin that got dogged out, got his cloaca kicked by his wife's boyfriend, begged for her back, got beat again, only to get rejected and bust his ass a third time. Yet yeah, no way he goes out that sad. Male sparrows that suspect their partner of cheating get their revenge by purposely feeding their children less, bordering on starvation. The thing is, he has no way of knowing which chick's actually his. He only goes by how much time the mother spends away from the nest. Basically, imagine your dad stars you within an inch of your life, all because your mom spent the equivalent of 10 extra minutes at the grocery store. But female sparrows ain't sweet either. The difference is, she cheats with better genetic quality or you could say high value males, while the male cheats to spread his seed as far as physically possible. Except that the female catches on to the cheating, she responds by slaughtering his entire family, children and all. And it's scientifically proven that butchering the babies offers no advantage to the offending female. It's just pure love of the game. Cheating's never right, but when your get back gets children buried, you have lost the plot. Especially since the female- I, I don't know, man. There must be something there rather than just like, just pure revenge or spite or whatever. Because these features are more out of luxury than anything. Humans can do that because humans can do that. We live in society, there is a certain form of luxury. Most of the animal wildlife just barely tries to survive and there is, they basically do things based on their survival rate or things like that, right? But there must be something element of like, 
uh, you know, like have, you know, caring about your own children or something because you want your species to, you know, your own children to survive type of mentality rather than just pure revenge. Females most likely to commit baby cancellation are second wives, as in they got with a cheater, got with him due to cheating, only to wipe out the entire first family. Also, I just thought about it. She also has no way of knowing which chicks are his. That means she really just life retires any baby sparrow she comes across. Yeah, that's a crash out of the highest order. And right up there with them has to be this frog. It's a culinary crash dummy off the fact that an Argentine horned frog would rather choke to death trying to swallow something physically bigger than they are than just give it up. Scientists have found expired frogs with their stomachs alive? torn open out of pure stubbornness. It's a gluttonous breathing pot of greed card come to life. Not only that, they're terrible swimmers, embarrassingly bad jumpers, and yo, they don't even rib it. Fooled and sold every aspect of being a frog just to moonlight as Jabba the gut. They can even develop every single frog be like this this they are not one of us. Don't don't, don't just like find different name for that species and call them different. That's not part of us. Amphibian corneal lipidosis, where they hold on to so much fat, they literally accumulate fat deposits on their eyes that blind them. To be fair, it's usually from overfeeding in captivity, but my brother in Christ, even Nakado Avocado put the fork down at some point. Especially since frogs can't vomit, the best this kitchen crash out can do is fully eject their stomachs. But luckily, they're not a threat to you. Next is a crash out that the majority of the American audience has to sidestep on a daily basis. Which is funny, because the Canada goose nearly got put on an eternal milk carton due to overhunting and habitat. That thing can clean its own stomach using its hand. Like, damn. You try to do that, you will get an infection. Sepsis. You're probably gonna die. That is, I mean, say, by the way, I'm just gonna pull out my, you know, like, stomach and just clean it, okay? In fact, we fully thought they were out of stock in the 50s until a small flock was found in Rochester, Minnesota. And with the help of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act in the US and the Migratory Birds Convention Act in Canada, along with conservation efforts, the Canada goose was able to make a comeback. And humanity and geese lived happily ever. Absolutely not. Yet yeah, a cobra chicken came back with a vengeance. I called the sparrow an airborne honey badger. Nah, nah, nah. It's just barcoded assault with wings. Easily the most undeserved arrogance I've ever seen on an animal. And that's really what it is. This damn velociraptor has some wildly irrational confidence. They're like Family Guy. They're nearly. They're stupid. It's not rational. Going against Tiger and like, a, what is a gorilla or something? Yeah, that, that thing would be way too easily dead. It's a barely an inconvenience to Tiger and like gorilla. Things like the elephant. All it takes a step. That's it. He got cancelled, came back, and by god do they not miss a chance to punish us for it. Even Sully's heroic landing in the Hudson wouldn't have even been needed if a goose didn't try to run a fade with a plane. Just proof that you can get a lot of mileage out of false, unearned valor. Cause it's a bluff. Geese- That's what you get for playing God. This was assigned to America and Canada that I don't play God. Nest on the ground, so they only really can respond to a threat to minor safety by implementing the honey badger method. By raising hell until you meet someone that takes you there. Add the fact that they've managed to lose their fear of humans and you have a honk happy threat to national security. I've even read reports of them apparently luring chasing dogs into deep water just to attack and harass them until they eventually drown in exhaustion. To be fair, you could just leash your dog. Oh, also, goose tongue. But yeah, that attitude's a bluff, and they read body language, so act like you've been around a goose before and you'll probably be fine. So why are geese so mean? Eh, they'd probably be dead if they weren't. But at least they're not capable of really damaging anything but your pride. Complete opposite of chimpanzees, my word. Probably a top three crash out in nature, cause you really never know what could set this chainsaw with thumbs off. Change your hairstyle for the first time in 10 years? Yeah, you just lost your face privileges. Push one of your troop mates a little too far? Call it Kaizen the way you about to get your troops to jump. Do a f***ing barrel roll? Absolutely not. Not in these parts. Chimps and really primates in general have a sense of fairness. Do something they view as unfair? Oh, buddy. You finna find out why they're the prime ministers of unproportional reality. Yeah, the whole human feature of like, oh, that's unfair, unfair. Basically, all the social revolts happen in our world is based on some kind of unfairness. Apply the same thing to like chimpanzees, basically, because I like, you know, one of the closest ancestors, I guess. Yeah, and th that's just terrifying shit, right? You give something to a chimpanzee, other chimpanzees going to demand it, like it's their right or something, and just take it the wrong way. Right? You don't even know what you're doing. Smile at them, they see they basically the thing like you're trying to like provoke them. <sighs> Every horrifying story coming from Castle Jurafic is from a chimpanzee. That's just fucked up. I'm not going near a chimpanzee zoo or whatever. Right? And you know, like the way it threw that bottle, the intensity. Like holy shit, the aggression and intensity. 
right? You see all those UFC fights or even like something like from Dirty Brocklins or whatever, and you see that intensity, you're like, oh, those some intense humans. Nope. Chimpanzee is like whole another level. That intensity, the way they throw, that bottle, I hope like everybody's fine who was behind that camera, but that bottle will basically crack your skull very easily. That's the intensity of that throne. Oh. The actions. This man decided to surprise his former pet chimp with a chocolate cake for his birthday. The real surprise was two male chimps getting out and mutilating the man for not serving them a slice first. I'm not gonna list the full extent of his injuries, I have a full video doing that. Just know, the first two hospitals denied him entry because they literally thought he was a lost cause. Monkeys in captivity have also been known to mob a member of their own for receiving more food than the others. And when I was eight, a chimp temper tantrum nearly had me halfway to Helen Keller. Almost had me rocking the Nick Fury fit. And we cannot forget that time monkeys in India went on a campaign of dropping dogs from roofs after one allegedly attacked a baby of their own. Yeah, primates are some Hall of Fame crash outs. Question is, what could possibly be more destructive? Well... <laughs> Tigers are easily one of the most vengeful creatures alive, and the moment this striped population control wants you dead, you might as well lease Tiger is the most, again, again, I'm gonna say, Tiger is the most terrifying shit of all time, more than lion. I don't care about the lion mane and all that raw and bullshit. Tiger is basically, yeah. Bengal tiger, you're dead. Don't even try to run away. What you gonna do? Like, if your gun tried, I guess you're gonna be fine. I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know anymore. Right? Bengal tiger trying, that, that guy on top of elephant, is he fine? I hope Castle Traffic gives me update because I'm not sure so because it, they are the most athletic cats of all time. Of course he was gonna jump over the elephant and target the human. Why not? Elephant's like, oh shit, it's coming for me. Nope, it's not coming for you, it's coming for the human. It's a casket. There's plenty of stories of tigers going from zero to a thousand. In 2007, three teenagers that may or may not have been under the influence taunted 243-pound Tatiana the tiger, reportedly even pelting her with pine cones from a slingshot. Tati cleared a 12-foot moat, severely mauled two of the teens, and killed the third. In 2016, a tiger ripped apart an infamous poacher named Baby only four days after his group reportedly shot his mate. In 97, a hunter named Vladimir Markov not only shot a tiger, but had the audacity to steal his kill. As a result, the whisker John Wick stalked his cabin, tore anything that smelled like him to shreds, including his mattress and bedding, and apparently even demolished an outhouse Markov had used. As you can guess, the story ended around the same time Vladdy did, once the Siberian assassin was there to greet him at his house. And then there's this. The backstory is that a mother tiger and her cubs had ventured beyond the boundaries of a park and had injured cattle in the process, so rangers went out to capture and relocate the trio. They successfully tranked and removed the cubs, but the mother was nowhere to be found. That was until about right here. The enraged- What a bunch of dumbasses. Why didn't they try to get the mother first? Why would you anger it by removing cub? That's, that's when the shit goes down. His mother cleared a full-grown elephant and managed to mutilate the mahout riding it, taking several fingers with her and the fury on four legs was never seen again. But the most infamous big cat crash out came in the early 1900s, when a tiger dubbed the man-eater at Champawat killed 436 people, giving her the highest human body count of any single- When I was a kid, I remember stories of that. I didn't put two and two together before, but I remember stories of that, how people were terrified properly properly terrified like there's a real terror right i mean there's a terror of many different things but this is the level of terror this is like a monster at loose level of terror people don't understand that terror unless they live it which is i can't even process how people were <laughs> basically living there i would get the fuck out of there go across the country all the way to the other side if i needed to i don't give a fuck this is some insane shit animal and it was discovered that the cause was a cripplingly debilitating tooth injury that forced her to go after easier prey. And that's the thing I do want to mention. I know I had fun with the crash out concept, but really all the tiger was ever guilty of doing was what came naturally. And that really yeah. goes for every animal on this list. Tatiana wouldn't have had to die and take- Yeah, tigers feels more stoic than anything you think. That they're not gonna uh, run into emotions that way. It's usually something out of rationality. Oh, I just have to do this because I can't do nothing else. Humans are the easy prey, there you go someone's son with her if they hadn't gone and tested her killer. Travis was an overweight, socially stunted, Xanax-consuming time bomb that some woman decided to keep inside as a pet. Even the whole Elephino mess started with poachers destroying and fragmenting their families and probably giving the pachyderms PTSD. Like, I'll joke around and stuff for comedic effect, but I'm not actually out here judging animals by human standards. Cause he said something real before he got Chris Rocked and left with fresh prints. Talk about the tiger went crazy. 
That tiger ain't go crazy. That tiger went tiger. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you drink water, hug exactly. your mother. There's no church in the wild and no judge in the jungle, so don't expect Break animals up. to follow either. <laughs> and I'ma see y'all. It's like blaming fire to, you know, because it burns you. How the fuck are you gonna blame a fire? Animals are animals, right? I mean, come on. You can go front of like tigers and chimpanzees and expect that they are gonna be fine. Yeah, in the end of the day, animals are just gonna be that, right? But this is insane. Tigers are the most, I'm, you know, I live uh, in a state where there are like natural tigers, gir, right? Gir uh, tigers is close, not close to me, but close enough, right? I live in the same state. I still haven't gone there to see those tigers. Fuck that, right? Uh, tigers, lions, I, I haven't gone there to see that, right? I, I just don't care. So yeah, that's insane. Oh, I misspoke. No, gear is for lions, right? That lions there. I still haven't gone there to visit. But even then, it's like the next state where I'm living. It's like 70% of like the most tigers, like Bengal tigers and things in here is there in MP. Uh, I, I, I haven't gone there to visit there either. That's, you know, I, I was going there for a, you know, because I was building a factory in MP. And I knew about this fact, but I still like, no. So I'm, you know, I could visit these places. I'm still choosing not to because of fear of this shit, right? I'm type of people like, why, why risk it, right? Why go there and like some mistakes happen and there you go. And then tiger attacks you, you miss half of your limb and then you blame a tiger, which is like, you can't really blame the tiger. Can you? Tiger is tiger. Tiger gonna be tiger, come on. Well, if you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.